Welcome back. We are now on part 3, Dynamic Range. Purpose of this part is to understand the dynamic side of the audio world. Before start, I want to talk about Master Meter. I will move my cursor to Mixer icon to open Mixer. This meter here shows our actual loudness. From minus infinite to 0 dB, this meter is our decibel based playground. Our ceiling is 0 dB. 0 dB is the ending point of the safe zone. If we reach a higher level of 0 dB, our audio will get clipped. Clipping is a type of waveform distortion. So we don't want to distort our track. In this series, our first mixing goal will be staying inside the safe zone. And the second one is keeping the dynamic range high. Dynamic range is the ratio of the softest and the loudest part of a sound. We can also say dynamic range is the difference between the loudest and the quietest part of a song. Here is an example. This waveform belongs to a song. We can see rises and drops. There are differences between the loudest and the quietest parts. We can say dynamic range of this song is high. Second waveform belongs to a heavily compressed song. It is difficult to see rises and drops as we saw before. And also, this song has an overall constant loudness. We can say dynamic range of this song is low. We don't want to sound too quiet or too loud, but we do want to keep our dynamic range high. Let's say our project will be dynamic and also mobile. We do want to hear differences between the loud and the relatively quiet parts. That will make our project mobile and bouncy. Let's adjust the gain levels of our instruments. But our ceiling or peaking point won't be 0 dB yet. It will be minus 6 dB. Reasons behind this idea are 1. Composing the project with a low volume to save our ears. 2. Low volume levels will help us to analyze the differences between the instruments. Before any tweaking action, we need a simple starting point. I will start with a drum beat. While step sequencer is selected, I will write this beat with my left mouse clicks like this. Let's hear the beat. As you can see, I only use kick, snap and hats instruments to create a beat. Because they are parts of our drum kit. I want you to copy the whole notation of our beat to your project. You can pause the video while doing this. After the beat, we need a simple bass line. However, our bass is not ready yet. I will left click on the bass to open the synthesizer interface. Lots of knobs showed up. A synthesizer is basically a sound generator. These generators are using waveforms to produce sound. This section is waveform selector. We can select the shape of our sound. 
In this series, we will go for sine wave, which is already selected. Sine is a wave shape, like triangle wave or a square wave. They all have different tastes of sound. Synthesizers operate with oscillators. This is oscillator 1. This is oscillator 2. And this is the third one. Each oscillator can produce sound and we can synthesize or combine these sounds as a result. We want the smooth, pure bass. So we just need a fundamental oscillator. That means oscillator 2 and 3 will be completely silent. To do that, I will move my cursor to this big knob and turn it over to the left side. At the top left of our screen, there is an indicator of values. When we turn the knob, the actual value of it can be seen. It changes as I turn the knob. Now it is 0%. That means it is not operating anymore. I want you to turn off the oscillator 2 and 3 as I did. Don't forget to pause the video. I will turn off the third oscillator like this. This synthesizer is producing a pure sine wave right now. Let's write a simple bass line. But this time, I won't use the step sequencer. If we right click on bass, we will see an option called piano roll. After selecting the piano roll, a new screen showed up. We can double click on here to expand the piano roll section. First, I want to make something which will help us. To open piano roll options, I will move my cursor to this little arrow icon. This long menu of options will help us in different ways. I will select Snap. After that, I will click on Cell option. This will snap our notes to the grid. I will open the Piano Roll Options menu again. This time, I'm going to select View. And then Key Labels. In the Key Labels section, I will enable All Notes option with my left mouse click. Now I can see all of the white notes on the left section. But I also want to see black notes. To enable this, I will go to Piano Roll Options menu again. Select View. Then click on Keyboard Style. And select Flat Option. And also, uncheck White Notes Only option. Now all notes are visible to us. I want you to open Bass Piano Roll section. After that, go to Piano Roll Options menu, enable Cell Snap and make every note visible. Don't forget to pause the video. Right now, our page focuses around C7 note. C7 is a reference, but I will write a baseline on E5. Let's scroll down the page a little bit by using this button. My action will be putting the first note here, on E5 with left mouse click. And then another one here. I want a longer note this time. To do that, I will put the note here, and move my cursor to right side of it. My cursor changed. 
This new double-sided arrow icon means we can stretch the note to make it longer or shorter. I will stretch the note to the right. I'm clicking and holding the left mouse button and dragging it to the right. So the note stretched, now it is longer. To hear what I wrote, I can click on this play button here. Or simply press spacebar key while pattern mode is active. Make sure your pattern mode is active. You can check it with this icon. If the icon is glowing like this, then it is active. Let's hear the bass line. Yes, it is a sine wave, but right now it sounds really thin. I want you to copy the whole notation of our bass to your project. Our note is E5. You can pause the video while doing this. Our bass line is thin right now. We want to make it thicker, bigger, bassier. Problem is the pitch of it. Piano roll section can help us with this. I will relocate the bass line to a lower pitch. But I also don't want to change the notation. That means we will change the octave. There is a shortcut. While pressing and holding the control key, I will press down arrow key to relocate the whole notation to a lower octave. If I want to carry these notes to a higher octave, I can press and hold control key and press up arrow to achieve this. For now, we want a lower octave. As these notes go down, I have to scroll the page downwards. I can use my mouse wheel or simply use this bar to scroll down piano roll page. E1 key sounds deep and bass. We will go for E1. If you can't hear the bass we wrote, I suggest you to pick up monitors or headphones which can reproduce low bass frequencies. I want you to relocate our bass line. Target note is E1. Shortcut is Ctrl plus down arrow. Don't forget to pause the video. Well, bass notation was based on E key, so in this case, I will move around this tone. Our piano will be more melodic than our bass. That means we need at least two harmonic notes. But how can we catch the harmony between our notes? First, I will open the piano roll section of my piano instrument by left-clicking on this arrow icon here. This list is our instruments list and we can easily switch between instruments. I will click on Piano, which is already on the list. This new page is our Piano Instruments Piano Roll page. Then I move my cursor to this little arrow icon again. I will choose Helper Selection. After that, I will click on Scale Highlighting option. This long menu is our scale menu. There are different types of scales in here. Scale is a set of harmonic tones. This option will highlight the harmonic tones and will help us to configure the next harmonic note. I will select Major option this time. If I return to the piano roll page, I see that some notes are highlighted. These highlighted notes are major scale notes and have tonal harmony between them. To hear it, I will write the simple full major scale. But this octave is really low for a piano. I will scroll the page upwards until I see the C5 note. And write a simple major scale with my left mouse clicks.
I want you to enable scale highlighting option and choose major scale. Make sure you copy the notation to your project. Don't forget to pause the video. We learned how to write the drum beat, bass line and melody. Here is your performance task. I want you to save this project and open a new one. Write a drum beat. Set your scale to Dorian and create a bass line in piano roll section. Write a melody in Dorian scale. Purpose of this task is to understand the piano roll section and improve our basic composition skills. Well, everything is ready for some knob tweaking. Next part is part 4, gain levels. We will tweak some gain knobs to create the dynamic balance. If you like this video, leave us a comment. Want to learn more? Hit the subscribe button. See you on the next part.